Hello and welcome to the Microsoft Excel Collegiate Challenge. My name is David Brown. I'm an Associate Professor of Finance at the University of Arizona in the Eller College of Management. And in this video, I'm going to be walking you through the Analyze Your Budget exercise. Now in this model, the idea is that you have data that you might have pulled down from some website where you track your spending habits and you want to do a little bit of digging into it. So we're going to go over lots of Excel tricks and formulas that you can really use to analyze a data set. All right, so the place to start is on the instructions tab. So you can read through the instructions in more detail, but the basic idea is you can either do this as a timed attempt or as an untimed attempt. So I did suggest you start out with it untimed. You can just freely work among the tabs, really in a no pressure scenario. If you really want to get better and really reinforce these formulas and the keyboarding techniques, then go ahead and try the timed attempt. That way you're put under time pressure. You're really trying to do this as fast and efficiently as you can, really just to develop those skills that you're going to be able to use in your other coursework and in your career in the future. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with the untimed attempt. And I'm going to start on the tab, get to know the data. So in this case, we have a large data set and I can scroll down to it. And in this data set, we have transactions with dates, locations, and amounts. So we're just going to do some analysis of that data. So the first question is, you know, what's the biggest transaction? Well, here the max function comes in handy. Right? We want to know the max on the dollar amount here that we can select. And you'll notice I went fairly quickly through that, and I used a couple keyboarding techniques. So let me talk through that as we go to our next question. Because the next one is, what's the smallest transaction? All we got to change is now to the min. So once I type in min, I'm going to now use control with my down arrow to jump down to the amount cell and then just arrow down one more. Now I can use control shift together with a down arrow to select the entire column. In that case, I've selected the whole array and now I can get the minimum across that big array of data. The next question asks me for the 10th biggest transaction. You notice the 10th here is tied to our parameter of the transaction rank up here. An important part of this model is that it's going to change these values as you go through the model. So as long as you've built your formulas to reference this cell and to make your model dynamic, everything will stay correct as the parameters change. If on the other hand you hard code the value, your answer is not going to be correct anymore once those parameters change. So let, let me show you what I mean. So here we're trying to get the 10th largest transaction. So we're going to use the large function. So we're going to use large with an array. The array is, again, just the transaction data. But now we want to get the 10th largest. So we select our parameter for the 10th largest. It gives us the correct answer. Now where you can get in trouble, and here is the next one, the, the converse of large is the small function. So let's just use the small function here. If instead you just type the number 10, you're going to get the right answer right now. And so you have the right answer in this case, but as soon as that 10 would change, your answer is no longer going to be correct. So you don't want a hard-coded number, and instead you want that value in there. So we'll put that in. Now we have our 95 cents. All right, so our next three questions are going to ask us something about transaction number 1835. Again, a parameter. So I'm going to set this up with a VLOOKUP. And I'm going to use VLOOKUP where I lock this cell, so I used F4 to put a dollar sign before the F and the 4. That way, as I drag my formula down, it's going to not move that reference. It locks that reference because that 1835 is always going to stay right there. So what I'm going to do now is select my table array. So this data down here, that's my big table array. This is also not going to move, so I want to lock that with F4. And now which column do I want back? Well, I want the fourth column here because I want the, uh, no, I don't want the fourth. I want the date. So I want the second column. I want to know when that transaction happened. And then zero gives me false for a exact matching. And I get the right date here. Now I used VLOOKUP because it's going to be easy to manipulate to use for the next two questions. So I'm going to use control copy to paste down my formulas. So now I have my formulas pasted down, but now I need to change it to not get me the date of the transaction, but how much the transaction was for. So the amount is in column four, so let's change that. And finally, the location, the next piece, 
is in column three. So we had a quick way to adapt that formula, that one VLOOKUP worked across all three cells because of how we locked it, and then also because of how we were able to just change the column references. All right, the next cell is asking how much did we spend total? Here's where the sum function comes in handy. So we can just sum across all the transactions, get our answer there. How many transactions are there? The count function comes in handy. So we can just come in here, count our data, 1588. Now this next one's a little bit trickier. We want to know how many unique locations are in the data. Now I'm going to show you how this works in a couple steps. First, we're going to use a relatively new function in Excel called unique. So I can put unique out here, and it's what's called a dynamica function. Notice how it spilled down the column a number of words, and it's all the different locations we have. So we have a big list, but it's really all living in one formula in this top cell. Now, if we want to go ahead and count how many of those there are, well, we can use the count a function. Count a allows us to count words and not just numbers. Count only works on numbers. So if we do a count a on that first cell, which is where the unique function is, we can see one. But if we actually do the entire array, and we do that by linking the dynamic array by putting a hashtag at the end. So now that F23 hashtag gives us the entire dynamic array, and now we get our answer of 70. Alternatively, we could do the whole thing inside here where we put our unique function inside of the count A function. And I did the wrong, I did the amount instead of the location, so let's flip that over. And now we get those 70 locations all in one function. So let's get rid of our helper cell because we're going to need that room in just a second. All right, so now we have, when is the first transaction? Well, the first of something is the earliest or the lowest number. So here the minimum is going to work for us. So we get the minimum. And then how many days did the data cover? I'm going to skip one and then get right back to it. So the total dates, well, we can see our max date. We can use max for that and subtract our minimum date. And we're going to see that we're one off. And the problem is, is if you subtract, for example, Monday, Sunday from Monday, right? There was one day in between them, so our answer is one, but really that's two days. So whenever we do date subtraction, we have to be really careful because we usually we want to add back in one at the end of it. So we're just going to add one to adjust for the fact that we don't want just the difference. We want to include both endpoints and we get our right answer. Now this last question here, the one I skipped, is what transaction number is missing. So in this case, we have a bunch of transactions. They're all in order, but one is missing. So we need some way to figure that out. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to say, I'm just going to do a simple subtract one from the other. So let's take the previous one minus the current one. And as long as they're in order, we should see a one. And I'm going to select my whole column down and use control D to fill that formula down. Now, if there's a skip where it skipped one transaction, which is, which is the case and what the data suggests, then we just need to figure out where the two is. So let's do an X lookup. We're going to look up the value two. We're going to see where in this array it is. And we're going to get back the transaction number from this column. So let's see what we get. 2950. So it found 2950 because that's where, and if we scroll down, 2950 is where there's a difference of two between the number and the number before it. So the one that got skipped is the one in the middle. So in this case, again, we kind of got to add one to our formula to get the number we actually want here. So everything worked well. We just want one more in our formula. And now our function works. We have everything correct. Everything lit up green. Let's go to the next tab. And actually, if you want to see how you're doing so far, you can always come over to the question results tab. And you can see 1 through 13 are all correct. So we can move on to our next tab.